Howdy guys, Nature Nerd here. So I have another really cool episode for y'all today. And I figured we'd be looking at an animal that has a lot of misconceptions around it. And a lot of people are really afraid of it. And they really don't have to be. So what I have right here, if you want to zoom in, is a brown recluse. Or a Loxoskelly's reclusa for the nerds out there. And spiders in general get a really bad rep of always biting people. And the bites are so bad. When really, in America, that's not the case. Around the world, spiders don't want to bite people. Okay? You see a spider on you, to the spider, you're just moving ground. Okay? They're not going to bite the ground. They don't want to waste the venom that they made to eat prey on a predator that really doesn't hurt you in the long run. Most spiders. So, why would they bite you? Why would they waste that venom, right? The brown recluse has a really bad rap, and that's because there's so many misconceptions about there, and so many people writing news articles, writing blogs about how bad they are, and they're, really, they're not. A lot of bites that you see of, oh my god, the brown recluse bit me, and this is what it looks like a week later, um, those are staph infections, or MRSA, and a lot of other infections have been misdiagnosed as recluse bites because that's an easy oh yeah the recluse did it it's a cop out and I mean doctors do it a lot and they were probably trained to do it I'm not talking down to the doctors or anything like that the only way to know what you got bit by if it was even a spider is to see the spider bite you and to identify the spider all right that's the only way the bites really aren't all that bad about 9 in 10 bites look like a mosquito bite. And 1 in 10, yes, they do have necrotic properties and they can cause some damage and they can be medically significant if you don't get it treated. But all the pictures that you see are secondary infections. To prove to you that spiders really don't like biting people, I'm going to pick up the spiral clues. I don't suggest anybody else does this, but if you know the spider, like I do, and you know their behavior, and you know how how they react to stuff, you don't get bit. Again, I'm not suggesting anybody else to do this, but I'm just going to let her out onto my hanger. Apparently I got a lot of web on me too. There she is, there she goes. Calm down. And there she is. And now she's calming down. They can be a little fast. So, I also see a lot of people saying that brown recluses, the, they have some in their house or something, and they're in like Minnesota or Canada or something. And brown recluses are only in southern U.S. and maybe northern Mexico. I don't remember 100% on that. But if you see one up north, occasionally they'll come in on like produce and stuff. But other than that, they're not in the north, plain and simple. A lot of spiders get misidentified as, uh, as brown recluses, and generally just any brown spider is a brown recluse to most people. Um, southern house spiders, for instance, look like them somewhat. And a lot of spiders even have that fiddle. On their back which if you can look at the brown recluse if I can get her to stop for a second you can see there's a fiddle there kind of it's more of just a stripe really in my opinion but it's there and that's one of the identifying factors another way that I like to tell brown recluses apart is they have the longer legs Ooh. you're good calm down and they have a tanner abdomen or back. For all the nerds out there, I thought that y'all would like a little trick on how to identify male and female spiders. So one of the appendages that spiders have are called pedipalps, and they're right there, and they're like the two little front legs, so to speak, in front of her mouth. Whoop, and there she goes. 
And in males, that is where spiders store their sperm for mating. So they're going to have a little bulb on the end of those pedipalps that is quite apparent. Now in females, they obviously don't have sperm, so they don't have that bulb on their pedipalps. So those pedipalps right there, and as you can see there's no bulb on the end, they're quite skinny and lean, and so that is how you tell the difference between a male and a female spider. So one thing, if you ever want to, oh that was easy. Go back out. Make it a little bit harder. So one thing, if you ever want to relocate a spider that's in your apartment or your house, is you can let them run into a cup and kind of guide them in with a piece of paper, like so. And then put the paper on top. And now you have the spider caught. And you can just go outside and just kind of check the spider out. The spider will be happy outside. You will have one less spider in your apartment. Everyone's happy. However, I would like you to keep in mind that spiders are natural pest control. And personally, I would much prefer a spider in the corner not bothering me rather than a fly in my face, which is really, really annoying. So, it's up to you. Just food for thought. All right, so I wanted to quiz y'all. I've shown you somewhat how to ID a brown recluse. Now I want to see if you can do it. All right, so four pictures are about to appear on your screen of different spiders. I want you to see if you can tell which one is a brown recluse. Leave a comment if you could or if you couldn't, and uh, let me know what your reasons were. All right, here we go.